Bob Pisani mentioned that we caught a great quarter this morning from Heinz. Now, because we're real time here, Heinz is up 40 cents. Many of you might have thought it should be up a buck 40, maybe 240, because it was such a beautiful quarter. You know what? I leave these issues until I listen to the conference call, which I had the good fortune to, and until I get to speak, because I am Kramer. To the chairman, president, and CEO of H.J. Heinz, who I was proud enough to meet last year we went to the University of Texas. Well, Mr. Johnson, congratulations on a beautiful quarter. Thank you, Jim. How do you do... Uh, with your top 15 products, how do you do 17% sales growth and 13% organic growth? It's not like these are, you know, you discovered some sort of cure to a horrible disease here. This is ketchup. Actually, we did discover a cure to a horrible disease. It's called people like tasting good food, and we provide them the means to do so, Jim. So we have great brands and great people. We're in the right geographies. I mean, whether we're in a filet mignon society or a hamburger society, ketchup goes well with everything, as do French fries, as does Heinz gravy. So there's a lot of products to appeal to a lot of different needs. All right, well, we're going to be able to talk for more than uh, we're going to be able to come back here for the break, but there's a couple things that I just want to get to that are just granular, that are not integral to the earnings, but I thought were great facts. The, second fa uh, the world's second largest ketchup market is... Russia. The two cities that you're gaining expanded leadership in is... Moscow and St. Petersburg. <laughs> I love this stuff. How did Russia become the second largest market in ketchup? I thought it was like a vodka-based market. It's better than vodka, Jim. <laughs> now tell me, uh, where, where are the people in China, India, Russia, Latin America putting the ketchup on? What is their taste? What's happened to their taste buds that they like Orida and ketchup? What, why, what has changed with these countries that these people now use your products? Well, now they're free to be exposed to it. For the first time in a long time, they're getting the opportunity to sample it and try it and find out it improves virtually any food they put on their plate, and they love it. In Russia in particular, they put it on just about everything. And remember, the worse the economy does, the better we do, because the cheaper the cut of meat, the more ketchup, the more gravy, the more sauce they use. So it's all good news for us. In Russia, we are up 68% in ketchup in the, second, in the first quarter. It's just a function of getting the exposure to the brand out there and letting people try the best. Well, were you kept out of some markets for a long time? Is that what happened? Your governments didn't let you in or you had no suppliers? Because this is a truly emerging growth company with a domestic business that goes along with it. Well, I think it was difficult to do business in some of these markets. We've been in China for about 20 years, but we've only been in Russia really for several and the same thing with India, about 10 years. And it's just as the infrastructure improves and the economies improve and the middle class emerges, our brands appeal to those kinds of people and in those kinds of economic conditions. And so the opportunity for us is ahead of us, not behind us. Right. I want to talk about commodity costs after the break, but there sure. was another thing that is, again, defying the wisdom. Throughout your conference call, I heard another concept that amazes me. There is no trade down going on when it comes to your products. Why is that? Because we offer consumers great value, Jim. Consumers don't buy on price, they buy on value. They buy things that make their foods better, or that make them happy. And after all, we're not talking about selling automobiles or airplane tickets. We're talking about selling products that cost several dollars. So in that context, people will give up certain things, but they're not going to give up great brands that improve their lives every day. There's just one question, though, I've got to ask. Bob Johnson, who delivered a Bill Johnson, who delivered a remarkable number. Bill, do we have to sell Heinz because the dollar is no longer week absolutely not you know one of the great things about a balanced portfolio with about half our business in the u.s. and about half outside and the brands we're in whether the dollar is weak or strong it is immaterial over the long-term health of the business jim we're selling consumer value and great products so I mean, I'd be very happy if currency stayed even close to where it is today. It's way up from where it was five or six years ago. I don't think we're going back to those days. So we're very comfortable and confident going forward in the current ranges that we see. Bill Johnson, you delivered a great quarter. Congratulations to Stocks of Buy. I appreciate it. Good, always good to talk to you, sir. Thank, Thank you, you, too, Jim. Thanks very much.